welcome to June Gem 13. So what I'm going to talk about today is uh, having a document library and having some check-in, check-out functionality because you have versioning enabled. Now you look at this particular document library in front of you, I have one document in here and it's got version 1.0. So what I'm going to do is just quickly enable versioning on this. Oops. And we're going to just say create major and minor draft version. So we have the you know, major minor and that's it. What I've also done is actually gone to modify the current view. So up here, modify view and added the version field onto the list so I can see what version we're on. Now, when it comes to, let's drag this over here and refresh it. When it comes to a workflow running, I'm going to create a very simple workflow and test out some functionality. So we, there's some actions here for checking in and checking out. So let's do a checkout. Right? If I double click on this, you can actually say what to check out. Do you want to check out the current item or do you actually want to find a particular item in the document library that you want to check out? I'll just do the current item. And for now, we'll just do a pause for a few minutes. Ah, oh, five minutes will do, that's fine. Okay, let's publish that and we'll call it checkout test. Now I want to show you what happens when you actually check out an item with a workflow. You'll actually notice that the version number changes. So we're on version 1.0. If I go and start a workflow on that item, and do a checkout, you'll see in a moment once the, fit, the uh, list refreshes, you can see now it's gone from 1.0 to 1.1. Okay, so let's upload another document and we'll just do something like that. Okay, back and now because I've turned versioning on, I've got 0.01 being the first one. So let's publish as a major version that way it'll be a 1.0. There it is. Okay. So let's go back here and we'll kick off a new workflow. Again, we'll do a checkout. And this time we want to update the item. So here we go we'll do update item and we'll update the title field. So current item, title, and Let's click on this. What we'll do is we'll put together the name of the document dash ABC. It'll be a new title. All right, done. Now let's do a check in. All right, so check out item and check in. When you open up the check in action, you have a few options here. Again, you can find the item specifically you want to check in. We'll do it the current item. You can add some comments. And then you say, how, what do I want to do when I check it in? Do I want to make no version change, make it a major version, so you publish it as a major version, or uh, publish it as minor version? Now, when you do a no version change, it still keeps the original minor version that the item checked out on when you did a checkout. All right, so just remember that it doesn't stay as like if you're on 1.0 and your workflow starts and it's a checkout, it goes to 1.1. If you then make changes and then say, Check it in, but don't change the version. It'll stay as 1.1. It will not go back to 1.0. So let's do major version, publish, and we'll just do check out and in. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complex because what happens when you want to have uh, your business process that is actually made up of a number of different workflows where you may have a parent workflow and then you might have a number of child workflows. Now, how does a check-in, check-out uh, functionality work given that your child workflows may also need to update that current item? So let's, actually we need to modify the view because we need to uh, make the title field visible because that's what we're updating. So let's add that, there's the title field, click on OK. And there it is right there. So now if I start a workflow off on this latest item, it should check it out, make a change to the title field and check it back in and we'll be able to see what the workflow, uh, what the version is of that particular document now. So 
after this, we'll confirm this works, we'll jump into potentially having multiple workflows and what's the best way to, uh, uh, to get that sort of functionality working. So there it is there. It updated the item and the version got changed to 2.0, which makes sense. Let's see if we were to come over here and look at version history. We should see yep, 1.0 and 2.0. Perfect. All right, so that's that done. Now, let's do something else. Again, let's kick off this workflow. Well, sorry, not kick off a workflow. We're going to start a new workflow. This will be our second workflow, and we'll do a checkout. We'll do a check in, and we'll do an update item. Okay. Now, update item, I'm going to do the same sort of thing as my other workflow. I'm going to set the title to be whatever the current title is, plus we'll call it second workflow. Oops. Second workflow. Okay. Done. That's This is going to be our second workflow. Second test workflow. And then what I'll have is a first test workflow <clears throat> that does a bit of work, updates the current item, and then kicks off a child workflow. All right, that's that one done. Let's do the same thing. Check in, check out, update item. To do, I'm going to update the title. We'll do the same sort of thing. Title plus first workflow. Okay. Now, after this workflow runs, what I really want is to start my child workflow. So the start workflow action comes into play here. And second workflow. Now, what I'm going to do is actually start this immediately, and I'm not going to wait. I'm going to just go let this go. So I might have uh, just a chain of workflows where one just starts the next, starts the next, starts the next, and I don't have to wait for the others to finish. So, bang, that's done. And we'll call this one first test workflow. And while this is doing that, I'll go and upload another document so we have a fresh title field to play with. Still publishing, there we go. And let's upload another image. And that's published. Okay, so now let's kick off this. Oops, this one here. Kick off that first workflow. Now what I want to do is actually, while this is running, I'm going to monitor that uh, that version document. So what happened was we uploaded a document and because we have versioning control uh, turned on, versioning turned on, our document automatically got a 0 0.1 version number, so a minor version. Now I'm kicking off a workflow and I want to see what happens with this workflow as we start uh, processing it because it's going to go through two different workflows. So let's go back to our list while that's, oh, no, it's already there. Okay, here we go. The first workflow ran, you can see right there. The second workflow ran, it added that to the end, but now we're on version 2.0, right? Okay, great. Let's actually run this again. So remember version 2.0, and let's see what happens if we run it again. You would think that it's a single business process, even though it's broken up into multiple workflows, that it should go to version 3. No, it actually goes to version 4. So when the first workflow ran, it published it as version 3.0, and the second workflow ran, it published it as version 4.0, so next version number. So what do you need to do to be able to not go up so many different versions as your workflows run? Well, here is my recommendation. Instead of having it like this, First of all, let's change this action and say, wait for this workflow to complete 
So my first workflow is going to start my second workflow and my first workflow will sit there and wait. Wait for that other workflow. And I want to move this into here. So what that means is we have the parent workflow does the checkout, does the update, starts the child workflow, sits and waits, and we'll let the child workflow make all these updates and then we'll check it back in, back in the parent. So I have two things I need to do. Make those changes and publish this workflow. And then I need to go into the second workflow and get rid of those check-in, check-out actions because I don't need them anymore. The parent workflow is doing all of that for me. So while this is doing that, let me go into the second workflow and I'll just get rid of those two uh, check-in, check-out actions. <clears throat> so it makes it really easy for you to be able to to do all your updates and only go up you know one version number which just makes sense okay done publish this so all it's doing is an update item and that's it and the other workflow it's doing all the checkout for me it's starting off that workflow and then it's checking it uh, back in so this should be done shortly okay perfect let's go back here now if i run my first workflow I should go up to version 5 instead of version 6. And fingers crossed that it should work. Now that's one way to, to use your, your second or your child workflows. but. Uh, this is kind of like the, the easy way of how to break up your particular process. Right? Now, it went from version 4 to 4.1 because my first workflow checked it out. You can see it updated the title, added a first workflow. And because we're starting another workflow, we're waiting a little bit. It's going to take a, probably a, a minute or so for that second workflow to kick off, uh, depending on how busy your system is. Okay, so now you can see the first workflow started, completed, second workflow started, completed, the text got updated, and we went from version 4 to version 5 instead of version 4, 5, and 6. Right? So hopefully this helps you get a better understanding of how to control some of your check-in, check-out functionality, how you can break up that little, that workflow maybe into multiple workflows and still have your check-in, check-out functionality without you know, your versioning uh, keeps jumping to, to crazy numbers. Thanks for your time. Look forward to the next June gem.